Is that you, Ness? You called me back sooner than I thought. Everyone here is doing just fine. Oh yes, Tracy started working part-time for Escargo Express. Here, I'll let you talk to her. And call me when you have some time. Oh, you don't have any free time? Well, here's Tracy. Hello, this is Escargo Express. Oh, is that you, Ness? Big bro! It's me, Tracy. I'm working part-time for Escargo Express. What can I do for you? Um, duh, nothing. I just wanted to hear your both of your lovely voices. I'm glad that everything's going well. Everything's going pretty well for me. Uh, I think that's it. Okay. Bye. Come again. Click. Oh, I forgot. I forgot to tell them that last time I took a stand against br police brutality. I also shut down a crime boss. This time I also brushed my teeth. So, yeah, I I can do hygienical hygiene things without being told. <laughs> yeah. But I also took a stand against police brutality, which is pretty cool. Yeah, not many 13-year-olds do that. Anyway, and this time, I'm going to be talking to the denizens of Fair Tucson, getting to know them a little bit better, and seeing what sage advice they could offer me. And it all starts with this guy! Hello, this guy. What? So, what? Huh? Pardon? Jeez. Hmm? You're annoying. Snap. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> hey, you. Later days, pal. Uh, 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 uh. It's so hot today. It rocks. Well, I'm not sure about that. Is it cold today? No, it's very hot today. <laughs> See ya. Here, get yourself a juice or something. Ka-ching! Ness got $50. Good luck, okay? And that's all he has to say. Sage advice. Thank you, friend. I'm glad to know that the people of Tucson are such good conversationalists. But hey, he gave me 50 bucks, and if I talked to everyone and got $50 from every person, that'd be pretty... that'd be rockin'. That'd be really rockin'. Uh, next, I would like to withdraw some money from my account to the sum of math. Let's see, then, but that, plus that. Uh, 400 and 51 dollars. I think that's right. If it is, I'm proud of my life. But if it's not, man, <laughs> I, I tried to do the math. I did. Aww. <laughs> I'm really upset about this. Uh, I, I called home because there's a status ailment that Ness can get from time to time called homesickness. Uh, when he gets it, it will stop him from doing things in battle. Try and think, th think of the words. Anything in battle, from defending to using PSI moves, will be stopped if he's homesick. It's not a 100% chance, but it, sometimes it can show up at the worst of times. It's a status ailment that doesn't show up on the map, so your first encounter with it could be, an, could be a battle where it matters, where one bad decision is life or death for Ness. And by calling uh, home at every major city, you can pretty much avoid encountering the, st uh, the status ailment at all. So, this episode, we're going to be going around town, just talking to people. It's not like a talking episode, I'm not talking to people just to talk to them. I'm talking to them because they have things to give me. Hey, Mon, you got to expand your mind and use the stuff creatively. Come on, buy some of my junk. So, what would you like, Mon? I would like this copper bracelet to the medium, not to the maximum. That's way too much for me right now. When I'm like level 16, I'll come back and ask for a bracelet to the maximum. But for now, medium is fine. Venti. No, Venti's large. Uh, medium. <laughs> I meant v medium. Uh, our defense goes up by five. Cheap bracelet for $49. That's cool. I'm good. No, nothing I need, Mon. Oh, wait, no. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I need to explain some of these things. The defense spray. Uh, that will lower, that will raise the defense of all of the allies in your party. For a price of $500, I would say there's uh, other things that your money is better spent on. There's the Rust Promoter, which will deal a ton of damage to metal enemies. Uh, the Starman Jr. is an example of one of those, and I'm not positive 
and there's no real way to test this other than hacking the game, but Frankie Stein Jr. or not Jr. Frankie Stein Mark II, I believe, uh, is weak to this. It would make sense since he's a robot and he's metal, but I cannot confirm or deny this. I'm just going to throw it out there just for fun, funsies sake. Travel charm, you know, copper bracelet, the, these broken items, uh, I will explain much later. This is something that you should not get because it will not be useful until a long time from now. So, with that out of the way, and with me being as vague as possible, let's go. There are a couple other things you can grab in here. Uh, there's a fr there are fresh eggs that you can buy, and uh, after a while they'll hatch into chickens. And you can sell those chicks for, a hun I believe, $100, so you can make a $98 profit on that. That's a pretty good profit. Even even with our dad calling us and depositing money into our our account, that's that's pretty good profit. Uh, so you can you can do that. There's another thing. There's a for sale sign that you can grab, which will allow you to sell items anywhere. That's also really useful. Uh, but I won't be getting it because I I just don't think it's it's worth it. I believe it costs a lot of money. So I'd rather just time my my sells and purchases uh, well. Okay, there are these two girls here. Might as well talk to them. That stupid slob, the apple kid, always asks me for something to eat. He's the inventor. He should invent some food for himself. Seems like she's trying to say, May, uh, make your own sandwich without actually saying, make your own sandwich. I'm nuts about this one kid inventor. No, not that airheaded dweeby apple kid. I'm talking about the incredibly hot orange kid. Aw, she's like all starry-eyed. That's, that was kind of cute. Paula isn't here. She suddenly left, and I don't know where she went. Okay, so, the talk of the town, besides <laughs> Orange Kid being, you know, quite the ladies' man, is that Paula is missing. And we heard from uh, Everdread last episode that she was kidnapped, and she's in a place, and we have to go find her. And she's going to be used as a human sacrifice. So we should probably put a stop to that, but I would like to talk to these people anyway. When I grow up, I want to be just like Paula. Well, I wanted to play with Paula, but she's gone somewhere. Paula is like a mother to me. You may not be able to comprehend my emotions. I might have a baby face, but I possess the mind of an adult. I beg your pardon. <laughs> I can tell <laughs> that he has a baby face, judging by the fact that he has a... a what is that? Is that a batter's helmet? Turn to the side. Yeah, that's a batter's helmet. For some reason, he, he feels the need to have one of those covering his head. I don't know. People on Earthbound are weird, man. Whistle, whistle, whistle everywhere. It makes me smile all the while. I'm Paul's mother. I'm busy taking care of these kids. You shouldn't have to worry about Paul, though. She has a guardian angel, it seems. So she's not worried. But what about her dad? So, you want to see Paula? Many come here to see her miraculous powers, but they're just leeches. So, are you from a TV station or what? Uh, yes, apparently, because I automatically decided to press yes. Please leave. My daughter doesn't want to talk to media monkeys like you. Okay. He's insulting. What if I say no? No. To meet you or to not to meet you is to only... Ugh. To meet you or not to meet you can only be decided by Paula. That's a very strangely worded sentence. Paula has said that she will only meet with a boy named Ness. So, you're Ness. You're the one that was in Paula's dream. You will save the world. Let me go call Paula. So he seems to not realize that she's missing. <laughs> He's about in, in touch as all fathers are. She doesn't seem to be here. I wonder where she went. I'm sorry. Could you come back later? I'm not, I'm not like insulting fathers. My, my dad's great, but to be fair, I mean, when you're at work all day, there are a lot of things that you're going to miss, and that's sad. No matter how da good the dad is, he'll always miss something, which is quite sad. Ness opened the present. There's a teddy bear inside. Ness takes it. So we broke into her room, grabbed her favorite stuffed animal, which I'm guessing was waiting as a surprise to her since it was in the present. I don't know, maybe it was taking cleaners or something. But it's sort of like a par uh, temporary party member. What it will do is shield damage. Uh, if memory serves, it will shield up to 300 damage? I'm not, I'm not certain, but that's just the number that pops into my head. Uh, future pal, correct me on screen if I'm wrong, which I probably am. Uh, but otherwise, it's just a damage soaker. 
Now if we go into this pizza place, it's pretty interesting. Welcome to Mock Pizza. We don't sell pizza here, we only deliver. Let me give you our number so you can place an order anytime. The best pizza is Mock Pizza. The number is... Psst, psst, psst. Got that? Yes, I did. So now we have another number. Uh, that's another thing. Uh, I called home to cure homesickness, which is a status ailment that can affect nests. Did I go over this? Yes, I did. I went I went over that. Sorry, my, mem my memory is normally good, but it's not today. Uh, yeah, I went over that, but I also called home to get the number to Escargo Express, which will enable us to store items uh, by having delivery guy come to us, which is pretty neat. I may have already explained that. I hope I didn't. Man, my memory's wacky. We talked to them. I remember that. So let's talk to Orange Kid. This is concerning. Is, is old age already setting in? You know, it's probably just the heat. Greetings, I'm Orange Kid, the inventor. Have you heard of me? I'm a bit embarrassed about my reputation. I have a lot inve of inventions in development, but I'm running short of cash. I'm basically a happy-go-lucky person, so I'm not worried. You know, I'm working on this machine that would really help you in Peaceful Rest Valley. I hope it's ready soon. What? You're actually willing to help finance the project? Uh, you seem nice and all, but no, sorry. I guess I was just too hopeful. Oh well, never mind. Hmm. <laughs> he seems nice. He genuinely does. He uses a shade of orange that's very underrated. It's spice orange, the color of the GameCube controller, which I have and I modified. Uh, but, mm, sadly, he doesn't do much. He'll give you an item called, I believe, the Supurma, which will play his theme song and then promptly break. Yeah, so bad investment there. But if we go into the Apple Kid's house, besides the fact that it's a nice shade of pink and that Apple Kid has trash all over his apartment, he's generally a stand-up guy. And he's the person you want to invest in. Well, I have sort of neglected doing my housework. I know it's a bit of a pigsty, but anyway, I'm Apple Kid. I haven't taken a bath in quite a while, so I may be kind of stinky. I love that his people skills are just so on top of things. Like, he knows how to break the ice, and it's genuinely heartwarming. By the way, I'm starving. Do you have something to eat? If you do, can I have some? Um, sure. In fact, you know what? Uh, what can I give you? I can give you an item that I got last time. Uh, I fought this uh, unassuming local guy. He was pretty unassuming, and we beat him up fairly quickly. And when he when he died, when he met his demise, a ketchup packet fell out of his pocket. No, I didn't search a dead person. I just found the ketchup pocket packet. And um, I thought to myself in that moment, that would be a good thing for Apple Kid. Because it's red, he's red, so he probably likes it. And you know what? Here you go. Take it. Thanks. You seem very nice. Uh, I wonder if maybe you'd like to invest some money in my inventions? Um, you know what? I already gave him, I already have invested into this conversation by giving him a ketchup packet. You know, he's broken the ice with me. I seem like we're, I feel like we're quickly becoming pals. So, sure, how much do you want? Yes, yes, yes! Oh, excuse me. I mean, thank you. By the way, I could really use $200. Um, you know what? Sure, just because you you look so responsible. I'll I'll give you $200 and now I have $1 because that was <laughs> that was planned. Uh, thank you. I won't let you down. I hope that you won't. Okay. You have a trash can here. Let me search it. Nest dug around the trash can because I am a guy after Apple Kit's heart. Uh, let's see here. There's a broken machine inside. And Ness takes it. Why not? I'm a mouse. No one has given me a name yet. You took care of my master. In return, I want to give you this. Please take it and say nothing. Ness got the receiver phone. Oh, I must be in your way. Zip. Just like Apple Kid, looks are deceiving. The receiver phone, even though it's a phone that only receives calls, and we can't actually call people with it, it can, it will be very useful in our adventure, because it is, it will be. In fact, you cannot complete the game without talking to Apple Kid. That is required, and that goes into something that I would like to springboard into. This, this area of the game is probably probably my least favorite, not because it's hard, but because it's. I don't know. For one such as myself, who went through the early parts of the game without a guide, I went through much of the game without a guide. 
uh, blind. Well, sort of blind. Pretty much blind. I... This area stumped me for a long time. I was going to finish it, and I tried, but it stumped me, and I ended up having to resort to a guide. It was fine, I used like a 24 hour, or not a 24 hour, a full game stream to just use that as my guide, and it worked out okay, but still, it leaves kind of a bad taste in my mouth when talking about Tucson, because this is the game that held me up. I probably would have been done, or very, uh, very much further into the game than I was if I hadn't gotten stuck for the, on this area for so long. Anyway, uh, there's nothing I'd like to do in Tucson anymore, so I guess it's time to go to the next town. I know, we're just breezing right through the game. Looks like the next, next bus will be here soon. And once again, the heat is making me mess up. Yep, this is the bus to three, but I'm not sure if we can get there or not. The fare is $2. Uh, do you want to go? <laughs> sure. Oh, wait. Oh, no! No! No, I don't have the money! Oh, uh, that wasn't... I wanted to plan the thing and look cool. Oh, I think there's an ATM in here. There better be. There... Okay, there is. That was kind of bad. Uh, withdraw! I just need... I'll get $2. One, two... Count the dead it there. Hey, there's a cop in here. That's right, I'm a- Oh, he's a police- uh, he's a bus driver. He's resting, life is long, take it easy, chubs. You don't have a town map, do- Don't give me one. Do not give me one, sir. I don't want another useless thing in my inventory. Okay, bus, again. Bus, go! I choose you! Back up! And, hey, driver, stick your head out of the window. I have the money this time. There you go, you couldn't just take one dollar and- Oh, snap. I have a feeling this could get ugly, though. <laughs> that is not something you want to hear from any bus driver. This song's something I want to hear, though. So we're on to Threed, the third city in the game. Into the tunnel. On a highway to heaven, or never not, uh, never mind. We're on a highway to not heaven because there are ghosts. Okay, okay. It seems like whatever can go wrong will go wrong. Murphy's law and everything. I could have named Ness Murphy because the ghosts will have us turn around. For some reason, the bus returned to Tucson. Yep, just like I thought. Okay, I'm starting to get the creeps. We're going back to the bus station. Do you want to get off here? Uh, you know what? Yeah. That's fine. <laughs> I don't want to spend any more any more time with you. Because you, well, you're you a good bus driver, but you should have warned me that there are ghosts in the tunnel. <sighs> Only solace I have is that I got a skip sandwich. And that this uh, woman... You know what? Sure. I'll fight you. Why not? I'll fight the women. <laughs> I'll fight all the women. Cranky lady, you got nothing on me. I, I have 44 damage. And you have a shopping bag, which actually deals quite a lot. Wow, you're, you're pretty good. You're actually pretty good. I have to... I'll admit it. She was pretty good, but I got 200 experience. And this is... Okay, the hardest game. The, the hardest game. The hardest part of the game for many people is coming up. I didn't have much trouble with it, because after I got out of Tucson, I was like, Bro, skip this! Nothing can be hard after that! And, um, yeah, so I didn't really get affected by it, but many people ag agreed that this is the hardest part in the game. And if you look at the enemy stats, you will agree. Like, there are enemies that can insta-kill you in this new area that we're, we're quickly approaching. And farming is not a bad idea. And if I do any farming, it'll probably be in between episodes. But I just want to point out that it is a possibi uh, possibility. This area was designed to be uh, designed to be tackled by two people, and it didn't work out in the game design that you'd have two party members here. So you're tackling it one party member short. Yeah, I'll go into this once again a little bit later. For now, since that that bus stop was obviously a bus, <laughs> we can go to this path talk to these people. If you want to go to the east, you could run into trouble. Peaceful Rest Valley and Happy Happy Village are waiting for you. I've also heard that there are UFOs in Peaceful Rest Valley. People in Happy Happy Village have, are fanatical about a strange religion. Maybe they've got some sort of bad fever. 
Be careful. Okay, so we have a cult, and we have UFOs. I hear that girl named Paula was kidnapped while helping out at the Pulsar Preschool. Okay, so that would have been our indication to go to Polestar, but... Oh, no, 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 no! I almost got... Mushroom fight... Tid. Actually, we can pretty much dodge them here. Uh, I don't need the butterfly... Actually, yes, I can. I'm not talking to anyone. Uh, PSI, life up. There. I've mentioned it a couple times now, but I guess since I'm just on the road, I can talk about this. It is a hot day today, man. It's... <laughs> I, I know this probably sounds weird for many many people in the U.S., but it's 70 degrees out, and that's <laughs> quite hot. It's also humid, so I guess that, that attributes to it. Um, but it, it's hot, man. In fact, when I started this episode, I was sitting on a cold pack from my freezer. <laughs> yeah, I... <laughs> I normally handle the hot really well, but apparently not here. My my computer is actually also sitting on a cold pack because it was overheating because of the heat. Not because of it was laggy, but it was overheating because of the heat. Hum de dum de dum dum. I'm hunting for mushrooms. I'm going to collect a ton. <laughs> That's weird. Weird obsession with mushrooms. Yeah, if you if you are mushroomized, in fact, I should probably get mushroomized at some point just to talk to her, just to show what mushroomization does. Uh, but if you talk if you talk to her while you're mushroomized, then she will buy the mushroom on your head for I think twenty dollars. Not a good place to grind, but she I mean she cl cures the disease, so it's fine. I'm not an enemy. I'm just your regular mole. Would you like to know about how to survive battles? Ah, uh, sure. You may have noticed that when you have been badly hurt in battle, you may survive a mortal attack and still have 1 HP. If this has happened, it was because of your guts. Your survival may depend on your guts level. Also, more guts helps you get more SMASHING hits. Beyond guts, you should have noticed that it takes some time for damage to be taken from you. This is because of the rolling action of your HP me meter. I mean, your life. If an enemy deals mortal damage to you, but you can defeat all enemies before your life is gone, you can survive. This is all I know. Oh, that's something I, I had forgotten. Uh, you can defeat all enemies before your HP runs out and you'll live. Huh. Neat. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll fight you. Why not? You're not a mushroom. You can't do much to me. And I, I do need to uh, fight enemies. Mobile Sprout. Uh, these enemies will... Yeah, they'll use Magnet and steal our PP. They don't... They don't deal any damage, really. Or they do, but it's not much. Yeah, 12. 12 damage. And to our teddy bear, no less. Uh, but they'll steal our PP, which is annoying. Arguably, I'd rather take damage than have my PP stolen. Okay, let's just proceed along this path. And go up here. Ah! For some re weird reason, a pencil sa shapes iron statues blocking the path. Why? Because of course it is! Why wouldn't a pencil-shaped statue, iron statue, block my path? And why couldn't I just skirt the hillside and go? Okay, so I guess we have to turn back. This was a great let's play, but it's over now. We can't go because there's a pencil blocking the path. Sad. Okay, uh, and the bridge is out, which goes to Happy Happy Village. Heard a little about that. And there's a present over there, but nothing else. Nothing else. I guess I'm just going to have to go play Dokopon Kingdom now. Uh, that's... that's it. Bye, girl. It was nice knowing you. No, I'll fight you. I actually got Dokopon Kingdom recently, uh, just to inform the people that don't know. Although m many people probably know because of the Runaway Guys now. They they played a lot of the out of the game, and I'm glad it's finally getting some popularity. Uh, Dokopon Kingdom is pretty much Mario Party crossed with an RPG. It's... it's pretty fun. It, it really is. It's a fantastic multiplayer game, even if it looks... <laughs> it looks atrocious. Like, it was made for the PlayStation 2, so a, con a generation before the Wii, Snap Nest, and so it's, it's dated, the graphics are dated, they look worse than the GameCube graphics in my opinion. Uh, so it's like, between the GameCube and the N64, there's voice acting, and it's absolutely bad too. In fact, it's so bad that it's absolutely hilarious. And it's just a funny game. A fun game too, it's rare, even. Uh, on eBay, you'll, you'll find a lot of deranging prices, but typically you'll find it for 70-ish dollars. 
which is a lot for a game, especially one that doesn't seem to be that good at, uh, at face value. But it, it is a good game, and I got it for $20. Yeah. So I'll probably, I'll, I'll probably cover it sometime on this channel. I played it when I, the day I got it, and it is fun, man. I have not played a game for a while that's just genuinely enjoyable. It's not a game that you'd, like, want to get... Okay, the teddy bear died. Oh, man, that's sad. I like the teddy bear. It's not a game that you'd want to become, you know, competitive, competition good at. Uh, I, and there are a lot of games that would. Smash is one of them that I only enjoy it when I'm playing, you know, at my peak. But Dokemon's not like that. It's a game I would just genuinely want to play. Sort of like a comfort food, you know? You, you may not be hungry, and... You may not want food in the moment, but comfort food will keep you comfortable. And it's like the comfort food of games, I guess. And besides that, in, in a multiplayer setting, it would be absolutely hilarious. Hello, this is the Apple Kid. I just finished to work on this great invention. Get over here as soon as you can. This thing is so cool. See you soon. Slam. Beep. Okay, so Apple Kid has something to say. He's got something to say. Uh, and let's go and do up a skip sandwich here and run. Oh hi, hello. Uh, I'll take it. I'll take a butterfly. Thank you. Back to running. Oh, I'm slow again. It really doesn't last that long. Uh, let's heal up. A lot of butterflies here. I'll take advantage of all of them. That'd be kind of cool if there was, like, a butterfly guy in Earthbound. I i don't think there is such a thing, but it'd be cool if there was, like, this guy that you could find randomly in the woods in, in like, this, um, this grove, and you'd have all these butterflies. That'd be really cool. I, I don't know if I'm, I'm just wanting Agatha from Toilet Princess to be in this game, but it'd be, it'd be neat. Random thoughts, man. Random thoughts, just like Dokupon. Okay, he's not here. He's out. Maybe those girls know where he went. That's, that's a possibility. They seem to... Oh, wait! Orange Kid, you're outside. Are you looking for that so-called genius Apple Kid? As a true genius, I'll tell you that he's in Burgling Park, looking for you. Okay, Orange Kid's not as cool anymore. Okay, he has, she has nothing to say. Yeah, he's not as cool as before. He just seems kind of stuck up now. I mean, Apple Kid's cool. We invested $200, and within the same episode, within the same half hour, we saw results. That's, that's decent. Oh, and there's his mouse friend. Hi, mouse friend. I'm Mouse. My master, Apple Kid, has been waiting for you. We started to nod off while waiting. Aw, at least he's honest. I'm feeling really out of it because I've been working all night. But finally, the pencil eraser is ready. This machine will eradicate all pencil-shaped figures in just one second. It's incredibly powerful. Just don't use it near a shop that sells pencils. Here, it's all yours now. Ness got the pencil eraser. If I invest, invent some other brilliant item, I'll call you. Will we say anything else? Uh, all things, all the things. He'll destroy all the things, and it will be destroyed. Yeah. Okay, so he's, he says nothing else. So now we have the pencil eraser. Yay, and we have... Uh, you know what? Use... I don't want it. I could sell it to that guy, but I think it's six dollars. I don't care. Uh, broken machine. Okay, we have we have a, f a quickly filling inventory. Slightly concerning. Anyway, that is going to be it for this episode. Yeah, fun times. We didn't fight many battles, and I'm not going to stretch out the episode any longer than I have to. I over the past couple of episodes, they've been long. They've been 35 minutes or less. Three, actually, or, or more even. I think last a couple, one episode was like 38, and then the first episode was 50, and that's that's not something I want to get in the habit for. Um, these episodes, I'm looking for a length of 25 to 30-ish minutes, uh, not counting the end slate, and so that's what I'm going to be uh, shooting for. 
And if I go over over that, then I'm sorry. It's something that happens in, you know, the episode that makes a difference. So, that's going to be it for this episode. Uh, next time in Earthbound, we will go erase that pencil with our pencil eraser. And then, we will proceed through Peaceful Rest Valley, one of the hardest parts in this game. In the end slate, I will do some farming so I don't have to show it next episode. And so you guys can see any levels that I grab. Uh, I do need to do some farming. Probably one of the last parts in the game that I need to do so. Uh, yeah, that is going to be it. I release new episodes of Earthbound Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. And if you like this episode, then comment. If you, if you didn't like this episode, then comment and tell me how I could make the next episode so that you would like it. And I will see you guys next time as I beat, beat up this cranky lady. Ooh, insta-kill the cranky lady. I'll see you guys next time for another Pal Plays Earthbound. And Ness's level is now 14. Offense went up by 2, maximum HP went up by 3, maximum PP went up by 2. Ness realized the power of paralysis alpha. Uh, sorry, that's... <laughs> before I go, that's one thing I did forget. I learned a move, I believe last time, called shield alpha. And I just learned paralysis. I'll be explaining both of these next time. I forgot about it, both last episode and this one. I will do it. The first thing I do next episode is explain those two things. Don't worry. Okay, bye. Thank you.